Hi there, this is Miss Niebling. Today we're going to add another smiley face trick to your toolbox. Remember that smiley face tricks are tools that good writers use in their writing to make their readers smile. Remember that smiley face tricks have a lot of different purposes. Number one, it definitely gets your reader interested in what they're reading. It gives a writer, that would be you, a way to add some spice to the text. It gives them some unique ways of looking at your words. Whenever that happens, that helps the reader to become more involved with the text and to make connections, and that's something that's always really powerful. It gives the writer a chance to show off their unique style, share their unique voice with the reader. Also, we talk a lot about how important imagery is. We want to make sure that our readers can imagine everything that we write. We want to give them a way to visualize everything that they're reading. And smiley face tricks do that. Also, smiley face tricks give us exact ways in order to show details instead of just tell them. So as we know, good writers show instead of tell. And smiley face tricks are tools that help us to do that. We've already learned about the first type of smiley face trick, and that's figurative language. So in your spiral, underneath your notes on figurative language, I want you to write the second type of smiley face trick down. Number two is magic three. In your notes, make sure that you write this whole slide down. The definition of a magic three sentence is one sentence that includes a series of three verbs used in phrases. The formula to remember for magic three sentence is verb, comma, verb, comma, and verb. Verb, comma, verb, comma, and verb. If you can remember that formula, you're always going to be able to know how to write a magic three sentence. Now, good writers know that they can use magic three sentences to create a poetic rhythm in their writing. When you are writing, you want to try and use a variety of sentence structures. And magic three sentence is just one type of sentence structure that you can use. Also, if you use three verbs in one sentence, you are definitely showing that you have multiple examples to prove your point. And the more support you have for that point, the better for your reader. Also, magic three sentences has a very steady rhythm to it. And when you are reading, whether it's a novel or even a piece of informational text, you want to have that steady pace as you're reading. Magic three sentences provide that steady, fluent pace. Now, here are three examples of magic three sentences from published literature. I want you to choose your favorite example and write one of these examples below your definition of a magic three sentence. As I read these examples, I want you to listen for the rhythm of a magic three sentence. The late afternoon sunlight leaped lightly from leaf to leaf, slid along branches and down trunks, and dropped finally to the ground in warm, luminous patches. You should be hearing my voice change as I say each verb. That's because the rhythm of a magic three comes from the commas and the verbs working together. He tiptoed timidly up the three wooden steps to the door, tapped lightly, and leaped back in fright. Farther ahead, she saw five great white geese pecking at grain, stretching their long necks, and flapping their broad wings. When you're done writing one of these examples down, go on to the next slide. Now, as a writer, you have a choice whether you show your reader or tell your reader. This is a sem sentence that is definitely telling your reader. In the woods, I listened, climbed, and growled. Now, it is a magic three sentence because you're using three verbs and two commas. However, it's not a very well-written sentence. I can't really imagine anything as a result of reading this sentence. However, this example is definitely showing us that imagery that we want. In those woods, I would spend hours listening to the wind rustle the leaves, climbing the trees to spy on nesting birds, and giving the occasional wild growl to scare away any pink-flowered girls who might be riding their bikes too close to my secret entrance. Those are both just one sentence long. However, we can definitely tell the difference between a telling magic three sentence and a showing magic three sentence. So here are some things to remember about magic three sentences. Number one, 
Verbs should be the same tense in a sentence. That means that each of your verbs should be either past, present, or future. If you look at these two examples below, Jamie ran to the mailbox, pulled the door open, and reached inside excitedly. Ran, pulled, and reached are all past tense verbs. Therefore, the sentence makes sense, and we understand what's going on. However, look at the second example. Jamie ran to the mailbox, pulling the door open, and will reach inside excitedly. Those are three different tenses, and therefore those verbs don't make sense. We need to make sure that we always use the same tense when we're writing verbs in a sentence. Another thing to remember is your comma rules. When you use commas in a series of three items, you need to make sure that you put the commas in their proper places. The two examples below show a correct way and an incorrect way to do that. Jamie ran to the mailbox, pulled the door open, and reached inside excitedly. That has the rhythm of magic three because there are two commas there that show us how to read that out loud. If you look at the second example, there's only one comma, and therefore we don't hear that rhythm because we left out that second comma. Jamie ran to the mailbox, pulled the door open, and reached inside excitedly. Don't forget to use two commas when you're writing a series of three. One last thing to remember about magic three sentences. Even though you can use other types of words in a series of three, only verbs are considered to be magic. So you, of course, can write a sentence like, I need to buy bread, butter, and milk at the grocery store. But just remember, bread, butter, and milk are all nouns. They're things. They're objects. They're not verbs. So that sentence would not be a magic three sentence. Now, the second example, you can write a sentence that says, Melissa was patient, kind, and gentle as she played with her baby sister. However, patient, kind, and gentle are adjectives, not verbs. And therefore, that's not an example of a magic three sentence either. So, how do you write a magic three sentence? Here's how you can start. First, you need a scenario. You need to know what you're writing about. So, let's choose that you're going to describe going to the beach. Well, second step is that you need to think about what are some actions and verbs that fit with going to the beach. So, you could write about swimming or fishing or tubing or boating. Just think about verbs that you can use to describe those actions. The third step is to make sure that you're choosing words that show us the beach and your actions, not just tell us. So here's an example. Brooksy grabbed his extra large beach towel, stepped onto the hot sand baking in the sun, and trudged toward an empty spot close to the waves. See how I did that? Three verbs, three descriptions. Now it's your turn. In your notes, I want you to choose two of the following scenarios and practice writing your own magic three sentences in your notes. Once you're done with that, make sure that you bring your spiral with you to class tomorrow because we're going to share these and see how great you are at writing magic three sentences. Don't forget the formula. Verb, comma, verb, comma, and verb. Fabulous job, guys. We'll see you tomorrow.